Hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of our Beating Burnout in the New Normal Workshop. Look at this. Our technology is working fabulously. There we go. All right. So if you can see me, go ahead and let me know if you are here on live or if you are here on the replay. I would love to know that you are here and um, let me know how you are feeling about yesterday. If you happen to see yesterday's presentation, you will know what burnout is and what the stages are. But if you didn't, don't worry. There is a replay and I'm going to do a little recap today. I know we were having some technical issues um, on the first day, so I'm going to do a recap for you all, and we are going to really dive in today to not just what burnout is and what the stages are, but also into how to prevent it and how to start recovering from it. So I'm going to be going through that over the next couple of days. We're going to be really diving in. I know I shared my story yesterday with you all about having gone through burnout a few times now um, over the last couple decades. I personally have been someone who's always had a lot on her plate and has always chosen to have multiple businesses, multiple ventures going on. I was a multipreneur while I was working therapeutically for many, many years, and I just got overloaded. Right? I just brushed it off, didn't pay attention to those early, early signs in those um, first stages until it got too bad. And I ended up having um, a few different effects from that. I, um, at one point, had ulcers. I had to have surgery for that. Um, that was the first time that I really hit that burnout. The second time, um, I ended up not being able to recover properly from a car accident and having chronic pain because my body was just burnt out and wasn't able to heal properly. And now I'm still dealing with some of those after effects, even years later, it can affect you internally. We were talking a little bit about that, about digestion, about sleep, but also about hormones and all those stress hormones and how that can really affect your body long-term. And so I want you all to be able to avoid that or to find out how to pull yourself back out of it if you are already there. So again, I'm going to do a quick little recap um, of yesterday and I'm actually going to see if I can share my screen with you all today because our um, you know, technology is actually being so nice to us. <laughs> It's actually been really, really good. Um, and so I'm thinking we're going to be able to do this today and I can give you a recap with the slides. Now, if you have registered for the workshop, don't forget that um, you are going to be able to get my slides as well as all the resources that I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to go through some of my top free resources for all of you to help reduce stress. Stay present in the moment and prioritize self-care. Those are going to be three big pillars of preventing and recovering from burnout. So I'm going to be sharing those with all of you. So please know that if you have registered for the workshop, you will be getting those in an email. So you'll be getting the recap videos as well as those resources in an email. If you have not registered yet, it's okay. I will go ahead and put the link here when the video is done in the comments um, and or in the caption. And so you will be able to see that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share this with you all um, because yesterday I know it wasn't cooperating. So um, this is again, our beating burnout in the new normal workshop. I think this is more important than ever because those rates of burnout are higher than ever before. We talked about that yesterday. We talked about what burnout is, that it really is a physical and or mental collapse really caused by overwork or overstress. And this past year and a half, right now, 18 months with the pandemic and everything else going on in our world, socially and politically, and um, you know, with this illness that has been spreading we have had the highest rates of burnout 
in history. And so you may have noticed some sleep issues, some fatigue. Of course, we don't want our immune systems going down right now, but you may you know, have found that you felt more susceptible to those things. Um, maybe forgetting things or being a little extra irritable or um, not feeling like you're getting the results from the work that you're doing or you're not able to get as much done as you were before. And then, of course, you know, higher anxiety, lack of focus, easily distracted, maybe starting to withdraw, um, maybe be a little depressed. I know, you know, with um, not being able to be as social and be able to live our lives like we normally have been able to, a lot of people have been feeling more of these effects over this past year and a half. And so, our rates of burnout have risen to their all-time highest levels in this past year, and you'll find that in, on average, one in three people, right, on average, are going to have some level of burnout. And, you know, our entrepreneurs, I know there are a lot of you that are watching this, just like I am, um, are very likely to burn out as our caregivers. And this year, everything has been piled on us. Whether you are a caregiver, you are a business owner, you're an employee, you're all of the things, right? We are already, we're doing all the things for all the people all the time. And now everything that happened was just on top of that. So wherever you were at already, all of that was on top of what was already happening in your life. And so we did go through those six stages of burnout. Um, the first stage being, you don't feel burnt out, right? You feel really enthusiastic. You're excited. Your energy is really good. You're really committed to whatever it is that you're working on, whether it's um, in that caregiving or in your business or your career or, or your family. You know, you are just have good energy. You're productive. You're getting it all done and you're working hard but you might not be setting yourself up for success, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Because if you aren't setting yourself up to prevent burnout, then you're going to progress into these stages because you're doing all the things and you're working really hard, but you're not building in the coping strategies to help you ward that burnout off. And so that can take you into stage two. That's where you're gonna start seeing some of those little effects of stress we we're talking about just starting to creep in, right? It's just the little things creeping in. Um, you know, maybe you're not burning the candle at both ends. You're not getting as much sleep. You are getting a little worn out physically, but not bad yet, right? It's just starting, just starting to see the effects of doing all the things all the time. And then you start getting into the struggle phase. And I know some of you had commented yesterday that you kind of live in between stage two and three. And that is extremely common um, to kind of live in between these. The struggle is where that frustration and fatigue start to get worse and start losing a little of that motivation and that excitement. Your productivity and your focus are going down. Get some anxiety coming in. A lot of people are kind of right here in the middle. Okay. And so I said yesterday, the best time to beat burnout is before it even starts. And the second best time is right now. And so no matter what stage you're in, it's a good time to start implementing some of the strategies that we're going to talk about today to help yourself pull back out and stay in that stage one, right? Stay in that enthusiasm stage and not let yourself slip into these higher levels. Because when you get into stage four through six, that's where the problems really start appearing in all different areas of your life. So stage four, you've got that conflict phase. That's the conflict between your body, your mind, body, and spirit Remember, are completely connected. We cannot separate those out. And so your body starts saying, okay, well, if you won't slow down, I'm going to make you. And so it starts fighting against you. Your immune system's going down. You're having digestive issues, but up here, you could still be in denial 
of what's actually causing that and what's going on. Your body is trying to give you messages and send you a signal, but your mind is saying, oh, I just have a cold or it's just another migraine, what, you know, or I just have, um, you know, acid reflux, it just is what it is. And you're just not paying attention. And so what happens is if you continue to not pay attention, you're going to crash. So you're going to go into that stage five where you are just mentally and physically exhausted. You lose all that motivation and your body completely shuts you down. And if you continue on that route and you don't make a swift change in your lifestyle for the greater good, then you're going to have chronic burnout where it's going to happen over and over again. And you may have things that you can't do anymore. That happened to me at one point, you know, from 2017 to 2018, when I was trying to recover from that car accident and my body was not allowing me to go back and do all the things that I was doing before, I was very frustrated. And my body was saying, no, we can't do this. You're done. And I ended up having to shut down a multiple six figures into seven figures business because I couldn't physically show up in the way I had done before. And so that's when I figured out at the end of 2018, I made a decision and I made a change. I made a shift where I decided that I was going to change my lifestyle completely And I was going to now support my mental and physical wellness. And so I shut down that physical business um, where I was doing a lot of work that was very stressful. I've done a lot of um, therapeutic work throughout my um, 20 plus years in my career of working with people who were court mandated, for example, and it was very stressful and it was very time consuming and working with attorneys, working with the court system, um, you know, working with the state patrol, uh, you know, there's a lot involved in working with people who are court mandated, you know, working with um, social workers in the past when I was working with families and giving recommendations on what should happen to the courts. You know, that's an involved process and it can be very draining and it's very time consuming. And I was doing that on top of other businesses that I owned and was really going at this all out pace for many years and even decades and didn't really take much of a break, little bits here and there, but it wasn't long enough. And then I'd go right back to the lifestyle that I was living. And so I decided to get myself out of that and really build my dream business, which I did in 2019 which is what you see here. That's Psyched Up Success. It is something that I've had a dream to have my own private practice for as long as I can remember and work from home, but I didn't know exactly how that was going to look. And now technology allows me to do so. And so um, when my body said, okay, you cannot go back to that pace anymore. What can I do? What can I do to help myself out of this mess and to help myself recover and not fall back into that again? So as a mental wellness coach and a hypnotherapist, I knew that I was working with clients with chronic pain and with a lot of these signs of burnout. And so I got some support myself through coaching and hypnotherapy sessions with one of my colleagues to help work through that chronic pain and chronic burnout and to really build out the lifestyle that was going to support the vision I had for what I wanted my life to be like. And it wasn't having physical limitations when I was barely 40, right? Wasn't even in my forties, was still in my thirties when that car accident happened. And my you know, mother who was in her seventies now and has had cancer multiple times and 
dozens of surgeries could do more physically than I could. And I was like, okay, this is a problem. I need to be able to support myself and support my family and to be there for other people. I had to take care of me first. And so that's really what we're going to be focusing on the rest of this week is building the good habits and changing the bad habits, right? Changing the habits of constantly hustling and always being on 24 seven, working long hours without breaks, piling way too much onto your plate and not setting good, healthy boundaries around your time and in your personal and professional life so that we can then replace those habits with good, positive self-care, healthy boundaries, and really giving you that renewed energy, that personal and professional fulfillment and the sustainable physical and mental health and wellness that we all want to have in our lives, right? Really building those coping strategies into our daily routines. And so this is what we're really going to be focusing on. Um, Today, we're going to talk about harmony. So we're going to talk about work-life harmony. And I know that so many people over the years have talked about balance, but when I think of balance, I think of the scales, right? I think of the scales and things having to be exactly perfect and nothing in life is going to be like that. If you are constantly trying to strive for that perfection, you are always going to be frustrated, disappointed, And a lot of people go right into that shame and blame game and give themselves guilt that they can't handle it all perfectly. Okay. And so think about this. Think about when you compare yourself to other people and you're looking around and you're saying, oh my gosh, so, you know, she has a family, she has a career, she's successful. She's got it all together. Her life is perfect. What's wrong? right? When you do that, it tears you down, not builds you up. And you're comparing yourself and your perceived worst and weaknesses to someone else's highlight reel. And you never know what's going on behind closed doors. And so we really want to start putting the focus more on ourselves and on our lives and how to be successful being us and how to take better care of ourselves so that we can be the best us that we can be, not be anyone else and have those pressures and those expectations that are external crush us. And so the first step to this, these are the the key pieces to that work-life harmony. And the first step to that is really awareness. So really starting to pay attention to your signs, right? Your mental and physical health, because everyone's going to be a little bit different. Everyone is different. Each one of us is an individual. And so your body and your mind, your health and wellness are going to have different effects based on what's going on in your life. So you're going to react to stress differently than other people would. So really want you to look at those questions that we asked yesterday of ourselves. Like, you know, how is my sleep? How am I doing with my eating and digestion? You know, how have I been coping with everything that's been going on? And what strategies am I using to help to support my health and wellness? So awareness is always the first step. So we're really looking at paying attention to your body, paying attention to your emotions, really seeing, you know, have I been forgetful? Have I been a little extra irritable with my family lately? What can I do to give myself the renewable energy that I need so that I can give my best to others instead of letting my energy deteriorate and then giving not my best, right? Giving my worst to others around me. So that awareness is number one. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. You can journal about it, about how you're feeling, do some um, daily and weekly check-ins and 
have some quiet time each day. We're going to talk about mindfulness next, um, but have some quiet time to really take a look at what am I feeling? How am I doing? Just a few minutes is all it takes to really just sit in silence and be aware of your body and what's going on and pay attention to the signs that your body might be giving you and, and saying to yourself, you know, how can I support myself to get better sleep? How can I feel my body and hydrate and do the things I know I need to do in order to be healthy? What can I do? I know for me personally, I am somebody who, you know, has to build things into my day. So we're going to talk a lot about that. I need to make sure that I have, whenever you guys see me with a coffee cup, it's water, Just, you know, um, I'm from the Seattle area. I had a Starbucks stand at my high school and I still don't drink coffee. It's just not my thing. Um, but I don't do well with, with caffeine and sugar and things like that either. Um, and I know that that doesn't support my body. And so generally you're always going to see me with water, but I always have it on hand. I have a water bottle or I have my, um, cup of water on my desk. I'll make sure that I have healthy, um, snacks in the car and purse on the desk, you know, all the places. So I can make sure that I, when I feel thirsty or I feel hungry and I'm aware of that, that I can fill my body with that. And I am aware that I am someone who, when I get busy, I tend to not eat and just really focus. And so for me, having those things handy is important. So what are you aware of? for yourself, right? What is really important for you to know about you? That is key. You need to make sure that you're aware of your habits and your tendencies so that you can watch for the signs. You know, do I tend not to eat? Do I tend um, to burn the candle at both ends and not get a lot of sleep? Or do I tend to sleep maybe a little bit too much? right? When things um, are starting to go downhill and you're starting to go into burnout. So really pay attention to that. And then the next piece of that work-life harmony that we're talking about today is practicing mindfulness in your life daily, right? Really intentionally focusing on being mindful in your life. And so one of the things that I wanted to share with everyone who is registered, you are going to get my guide to mastering mindfulness. So you will get that in your email tomorrow um, with the recap of this um, live today and this video. Um, and you're going to get all the practices that I've been teaching and using throughout my career, um, you know, through meditation, through um, hypnotherapy through, you know, increasing focus and stress, you know, all of these different tools, you're going to see how to use mindfulness as a stress reduction tool, as a focus tool, and as a tool to really have harmony in all areas of your life. And so if you're not somebody who's naturally in tune to their body or to their inner wisdom. Um, mindfulness can really help you do that. It's gonna help you to sleep better and it's gonna help you to have better emotional balance, right? And better harmony in both your personal and professional worlds. And so mindfulness, you don't know what that is. The definition of that is it's a mental state that is achieved by focusing your awareness on the present moment. You know, we tend to spend uh, most of our time thinking about the future or the past. We're stressed and anxious and worried about one of those two things and not on the present moment of where you are right now. And so that's really what mindfulness is, is it is focusing on the present moment while also calmly and we're going to respond instead of react. We're going to calmly acknowledge and accept our feelings, our thoughts, whatever sensations, perceptions that are going on in our body. And we're going to use that as a therapeutic technique 
for ourselves. And so mindfulness is just awareness, right? It's awareness of our thoughts and our feelings and our surroundings. Being non-judgmental, that is a huge key here. Being present on this moment without judgment. And that's where focusing on the past and the future, a lot of times that judgment comes in. Why did I do this? No, I'm not going to, I can't do that. I didn't do it before. What makes me think I'm going to do it again? You know, all of these things were very judgmental over ourselves. We can be our own worst critics. And so mastering mindfulness is actually going to help you to avoid those traps, which are going to in turn really support your mental wellness, decrease stress physically and mentally, and help you to avoid and or recover from burnout, to get yourself out of it. And so you're going to see that there are a lot of advantages to being mindful. So once you start putting this in to your everyday routine, you're going to notice better sleep. You're going to notice less anxiety. It's going to help fight depression and prevent relapses. Right? It's going to really help boost your immune system, which is an amazing byproduct, right? Um, and it's going to strengthen your brain. It's really going to help strengthen that muscle. It's like doing a rep, it's like working out your brain. When you're practicing mindfulness every day, it's going to help with your memory and your focus, regulating your emotions, being able to have compassion and empathy for other people. It's going to help you learn and pick things up faster. It's going to help you make better decisions. It's going to help you with all of those things. Um, people who do practice mindfulness on a regular basis are shown to be compassionate, not only towards others, but also towards themselves. And that is one thing I teach all of my clients is how to have self-compassion because I think that that is extremely important because again, being our own worst critics, we tend to beat ourselves up a lot and that is not helpful when you're going through those stages of burnout. You need to have a lot of compassion and grace for yourself as well as for other people. It's also going shown to help um, people who do practice mindfulness to have a greater ability to tune out distraction. So if you're somebody who gets distracted really, really easily, this is going to help to strengthen that part of your brain. It's going to help you with your attention. And those people also tend to have stronger self-esteem and really live in line with their core values. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. We're going to talk about um, priorities and values and scheduling and delegation. Um, so you'll see that on here. Um, also, it's going to talk about boundaries and priorities. Those are some things that we're going to discuss tomorrow. Today, we're going to focus mostly on awareness, the mindfulness, and your self-care, okay? Um, but there's even evidence that, you know, people who practice mindfulness bounce back faster from criticism, from obstacles, from life challenges, losses. You're going to bounce back a lot quicker. You're going to have more resilience and strength really increases that emotional intelligence and that bounce back ability in your life. And, you know, people can even improve things like PTSD from coming back from war or going through abuse by using mindfulness. It's such an amazing skill to learn. So you are going to get my mastery mindfulness guide. If you are registered, um, I'll send that over to you. You will find five ways to be mindful every single day in that guide. The other thing that um, you're going to be able to get from me um, is going to be um, focused on de-stressing and self-care. And so that is actually going to be um, my stress-less survival guide. Okay, so I'm going to give you some of these tips right now, but you're going to see that in the guide as well. It's my guide to really increase peace and joy in your super busy life and de-stress. Um, but it's going to talk a lot about self-care, a lot about prioritizing time for yourself. And I know that so many of you are going to say, I don't have time to do that. But whether it's five minutes, 
15 minutes or a half an hour doing this mindfulness and meditation and self-care, really weaving these things into your life is going to be well worth the time that it's going to take. And it really doesn't take a lot of time. You know, unplugging is huge towards this. You know, just taking the time to unplug and to, you know, just take a breath. That doesn't take a lot of time, right? Taking a walk in your day doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, but you're going to see that there are so many really great ways that you can even build it in for right before you go to sleep and right when you get up in the morning. We're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow as well. How you can book end your days and be able to um, not take a lot of extra time during the day, but to just build in those blocks. I call it bookending, right? Like the ends of your days and everything else can fill in in between. But taking the time for yourself is really, really important. And so you're going to want to guard your energy and guard your time for yourself to really refill your own cup. Because think about this. If you are constantly giving to everyone else, think about that um, cup of water, right? If you're constantly um, you know, pouring it out, you start it up here in the morning and then you're constantly pouring it out, pouring it out, pouring it out, and it never gets refilled, what's left at the end of the day? Nothing, right? It's empty. Well, if you're doing that over and over and over again, that's a recipe for burnout, right? You just go through that cycle of burning yourself out continuously. And that's where a lot of people living in those stages two to three, that's what's happening. They're not giving themselves enough water in their cup. So enough water in your cup would look like your cup was overflowing because your cup is you, your cup is for you. This is my cup. Right. This is only my cup to drink out of. But when it's overflowing and there's excess, that's what you can give to other people. So you want to fill it up so much that you have the extra to give to everyone else, but you still keep your cup and your energy tanks full. So that's really what the goal is with the self care. It's not just about bubble baths and, you know, uh, hot tea and things like that. Although those things are wonderful. And if that is something you love, do it hundred percent. But there are a lot of other ways that you can take really, really good care of yourself. And so the other resource that everyone is getting, so you're getting my mastering mindfulness guide, you're getting my stressless tips, survival guide. You're also going to get my 77 rewards to give yourself. And that is going to be my self-care starter list because yes, there are 77, but there's probably, you know, 777 ways that I could come up with uh, to treat yourself well. All right. So this is all about taking care of you. And so you need to give yourself rewards because you are doing all the things for all the people all the time. And so you deserve it. You know, whether it is um, taking your dog on a walk or going and playing um, fetch outside without your cell phone, right? Um, or it is, you know, trying something fun and new, right? Getting a new hairstyle or trying a new makeup routine or um, starting a new hobby or um, just going out and gathering or buying some fresh flowers that are going to bring you joy when you walk by them and seeing them, or it's that spa day, um, you know, getting your nails done or taking that hot bath or taking a long shower. If you have small children and that's the only place that you can get a break. Um, again, it could be before people get up in the morning or after, if you have a house full and you never get a moment to yourself, um, but taking intentional time right? Intentional time to do something for you. So these 77 ways to reward yourself and to treat yourself are really just going to get the creative juices flowing on what you love to do. What brings you joy? And so something you could do today is make a joy list, 
you can make a list of all the things you can think of that you enjoy doing and bring you joy, even if you haven't done it in a long time. You know, one of the times that I um, decided, you know what, I'm not taking as good of my care of myself as I could, and I need to have more joy in my life, um, was somebody asked me, like, what brings you joy? And I was like, I, I couldn't answer it, right? That's a problem. If you were like me, you couldn't answer that. What are you doing in your life that actually brings you joy? Um, we need to make a change. And so I literally looked back into childhood and into my teen years. And I looked at what are the things I did that I just loved doing. And I started incorporating some of those into my life. It could be art. Maybe you were really into art when you were younger and you got away from it. Um, you know, personally, there were a few things. I used to really enjoy reading just for me, like not for school, not for work, not for research just for myself. And I stopped doing that when I started getting a thousand pages a week to read. When I was in um, grad school, it was insane. The amount of reading that I had to do. And I just got burnt out on that. And I felt like I didn't have time to read something that was just for me because I had so much other reading to do that was for work. And so, uh, you know, that's something that I had gotten away from writing, creative writing was something that I had gotten away from that I was really passionate about when I was younger. Um, dancing was something that I decided to reincorporate back into my life. And in turn, I was able to do something social and build relationships with people that I still have. This was 10 or 11 years ago um, that I decided to reincorporate dancing into my life. And um, I've been loving it. I used to you know, dance um, you know, at, at recitals and competitively, and I just really loved it. And then I swam competitively as well when I was younger. And so I started going to the pool. And now, you know, I had to morph some of those things through the pandemic. Um, you know, I couldn't go to the pool for there for a while. I couldn't um, go necessarily to the physical dance classes. But they went online and I started doing things like that. Um, but what are the things that you love? How can you shift those to fit your lifestyle? Incorporate one back into your life and see how you feel. You also can really look at what is draining your energy. Look at where you're spending your time, where you're spending your resources. I know I've had several clients now that have, I know we're on Facebook, um, the streaming this, but who have taken Facebook off of their phones and made it more intentional because they were getting sucked into the scroll and it was just draining their energy. And so if it's not a good, positive, wonderful place for you to be, then take the time just to be intentional, to go on, check what you need to check. For me, it's a lot of business things. And so posting, commenting, doing all the things that I need to do, engaging with you all in Purpose, Passion, Path, and then getting off of it, right, is, is what works really well for me. Unless I'm having an indulging time and I'm saying, I'm going to sit and scroll because I can, because I just finished everything else I needed to do. And it's time for me to sit and be able to do that. You know, giving that as a reward versus getting sucked into the distractions throughout the day. If it's a good positive place for you, I have created my social media to be a good positive place for me, but for a lot of people, it's not. And so if you go on there and you're not surrounded by people who have stories of winning, people who have exciting things going on, or if for you, you play the comparison game too much. And so even seeing that is not healthy for you, get off of it. Really look at also um, the people you're spending your time with, the tasks you're spending your time on. And we're going to talk a little bit more about delegation and priorities tomorrow. Um, but take a look at, you know, what sucks your energy, which drains it. Where are those energy suckers and where are the energy givers in your life? You know, who in your life makes you feel better about yourself, your situation and the world around you, whether that's a person, whether that's someone you follow and listen to, whether that's um, you know, programs that you're watching, 
movies or Netflix or, you know, what kind of shows are you watching? How do you feel afterwards? Look at your energy and really guard and protect that. I think that's really important. So um, again, we'll talk about more how to schedule this in um, tomorrow. How do you fit it all in? But for today, I just wanted you to know what the building blocks are for that work-life harmony. You know, the building blocks of having awareness, really tapping into your awareness of your body and of your emotions, being mindful and staying present in the daily, um, being able to set good, healthy boundaries, really, really important. Um, being able to live in your values and prioritize accordingly and being able to really give yourself good self-care, right? Taking care of yourself first, because again, I know how important it is to you to be able to take care of absolutely everyone else, but it's all about taking care of you first. Okay, so that is what's really important. So that being said, thank you so much for joining me today for day two of our self-care and boundaries and mindfulness and awareness um, because it's so important to prevent burnout and to beat it for good, right? To recover from it. It's so important to do that. So I'm glad in day two, we were able to walk through those. Again, those of you who are registered, will get the recap, you'll get the replay, you'll get all the resources for that. It's so important now more than ever to beat burnout in this new normal. And by new normal, I mean, this new ever changing normal, right? It's not going back to exactly the way it was. We have some tidbits of that, some semblance of that is coming back in, right? But we're not 100% going back to that. And things have shifted and things have changed. And you may have found in these past 18 months, you don't want to go back to the way it was. It's just astronomically growing the number of people who are like, I don't want to go back to the position I was in before. I don't want to go back to the lifestyle I was in before. So it's really important to build out this new way of living and these coping strategies in these ever-changing times so that you can beat burnout, prevent it, get out of it. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining me for day two. Tomorrow, we're going to talk again just more about those pieces that are more strategic and, and concrete. So we're really going to go through scheduling and prioritization tomorrow and um, all the ways that you can take this and put it into your everyday life, no matter how full or how busy or how crazy it might be. We're going to find those ways for you to incorporate these strategies into your life. So please let me know if you were here live, if you were here on the replay, what your takeaways were from today, what your questions are. If you'd like me to continue to answer throughout the week, your questions have been wonderful. So keep those coming. And I will look forward to being here with you all for the next few days to really help support you. And if there's any other way that I can support you um, in your journey, please reach out to me directly if you have some private questions as well. And we're going to be in this together. Have a wonderful Wednesday and I will see you all tomorrow.